Today we're going to be talking about FortiSwitch and a different way to set it up than what I'm used to and something that I didn't see documented anywhere, but I had a client asking for it to work in this way. I said, I've got some ideas, so let me check back with you. Uh, and after some testing, sure enough, yes, it did work. Uh, and I refined it a little bit. So let's check it out. If it's your first time here, I'm Gregobyte and I talk all things network and security. The main thing that we're trying to do here is to use FortiLink to manage the Forta switches, but we have a third party switch sitting in the middle. So how do we do that? Traditionally, the only way that you're going to be able to do that is over layer three. And up to this point, my understanding was that that switch or router had to be a layer three device uh, acting as a layer three device and that a layer two switch in between the firewall and the switch would not be able to work. Uh, that, that was just not compatible, didn't work that way. And I had tested it at one point and it didn't work that way. So I thought, sure, that's yeah, fine. Uh, and I thought that was the end of it. And the answer was just no layer two non Forta switch in between the FortiGate and the Forta switch. In today's lab, we're going to be running all of our Forta gear on uh, 7.2. So keep that in mind. Things may look different as things evolve. All right, so here's the topology that we're going to be working with today. We've got a 91G sitting up at the top. We've got a port channel of ports 3 and 4 on my FortiGate and ports 47 and 48 on my Cisco switch. Then I've got a trunk going down from that Cisco switch down to my Forta switch, ports 21 down to 22. And what we're going to do here is uh, actually get the communication down. We're going to do this with pretty little configuration to help make this a little bit simpler. Uh, and let's jump in. So first off, I've got an aggregate interface uh, with a few links under here. The main one we're going to use here is uh, what I call for to test, just VLAN 1. So if we look inside of here, pretty normal interface, uh, 10.2.1, sorry, 10.2.2.1 slash 24. We've got ping turned on. Uh, don't even have security fabric turned on, but we have DHCP turned on. And inside of here, I've told it that I've got a wireless controller uh, sitting at 10.2.255.1, which is actually my FortiLink interface. So if we go look inside of our FortiLink interface, we'll see that we do indeed have the 10.2.255.1 slash 24 enabled. We don't have any Forta switches hooked up right now, and we're going to automatically authorize devices just to make this demo a little simpler. Now, if we go check out the Wi-Fi and switch controller, look at our managed four switches, we'll see that there are no managed four switches here right now. All right, so now that we're in here, let's check out our configuration. So we can see that on all of these, we have them just set up as a trunk. We've got them in a channel group. They've got a native VLAN 5, which doesn't really matter right here. Ignore the Axis VLAN 5. That was from a different test I was doing. Uh, but all VLANs are allowed across this. Down to our four switch, we've got port 21. So let's check that out. So right now, this is a shutdown interface. Uh, we've got it in a trunk mode. The uh, native VLAN is the default, which is VLAN 1, which we're going to be using. And I do have a uh, port channel created, um, but that's actually not necessary for right now. So now I'm just going to go and open that port up. And we can see that this is going to come up. And that's hooked off into this port switch right here, which we are going to also do exec factory reset. This is a pretty standard step, especially when we're talking about doing an initial configuration of a four switch. So now the four switch has been completely factory reset. We'll get logged in real quick with the default username of admin with no password. So we need to set a new password. All right, and we're in. So a quick, easy way to see if we've got a uh, connection up to our manager is to do execute switch controller hit con status. So right now it says, hey, uh, make sure that the FortiGate has, you know, uh, CapWap enabled and that this switch is in FortiLink mode. The next thing I could do is to show system interface. And I'm just going to put a question mark here, which is going to show me what I need to know, which is that I have a DHCP IP address for my internal interface, which is the management. So we know we've got DHCP uh, from that IP address and we're going to go back over to our FortiGate and we'll refresh this page. So we see that there's nothing in here. 
uh, which reminds me that we have one more step that we need to complete on the FortiGate, which is to go into the firewall policy and to create a policy for this switch to actually talk to the FortiLink interface. Let's call this FortiLink. We're going to be coming from the Forti test network. And right now, I'm just going to uh, put it also to the outgoing interface of Forti test. Uh, simply because you cannot set it to be able to talk to for the link in the GUI. Uh, we'll go back into this in the CLI and just flip it over for the outgoing interface to be the for the link interface. Since I'm in a lab, I'm not going to worry too much about a source and destination or the service. Turn off NAT. Don't need that. Still log everything. Hit OK. And then again, we're going to right click that, go edit in CLI going to set destination interface to Forta link. So now if we refresh this page, we'll see that it is from Forta test over to Forta link. Again, this is the IP space that we are going to be using for management of the Forta switch in this environment. And if we go down to our switch controller, we just have to give it a little bit of time here. While we're waiting for that, let's go back over here and double check on the get con status. So now that it has gotten some information, including the IP address of its uh, controller, it's saying the connection is idle. I'm trying to make a connection, but I haven't made a connection right now. So let's go back over to the firewall. So we're going to do the exact same command that we were just doing over on the switch. So right now we can see that there are no managed devices uh, sitting out here. So what we can also do is going to be execute switch controller diagnose connection. What this is going to do is going to walk us through real quick uh, a couple different things that are pretty common issues that we'll see, which is going to be whether or not the interface is enabled, uh, if there's DHCP on, if there's NTP on. So everything looks good here right now. All right, we're just going to do some basic connectivity testing here from the Forta switch. Uh, its default gateway should be no problem. We do have ping enabled on it. Then we'll also test out connection over to the FortiLink interface, which we can also talk to. So we have basic connectivity. Uh, let's do one more quick uh, get con status on this. And look at that. Now that we've got some traffic going along, uh, we're going to see that we can actually talk to the FortiGate and it is now managing it. You can see the remote address is the one that we put inside of there uh, and exactly when it joined. Gate. So now if we go over here, let's refresh this managed Forta switches again. Again, I have this set to automatically authorize any switches. If that wasn't the case, you would have to go and authorize this switch. I can go inside of here. And the first thing I like to do is going to be to set a name for it. So I'm going to use the same naming convention I have across my environment and we'll hit OK. I find that that just makes it a little bit easier to know which switch I'm talking about. Uh, it's how I have things labeled inside of my console server. So if I do that, uh, if we go back to console access, we'll actually notice on an enter that you can see the host name has actually been updated on the Forta switch itself. So we know that things are getting pushed down. So now what we have to do is to make sure that we have a VLAN created. I know we've already created a VLAN interface under the aggregate interface, but that is more of your layer three interface that you'll reference in policies uh, that will give out DHCP, but the switch itself needs to know about the layer two VLAN. Uh, so we actually made a VLAN here just called uh, test workstation, gave it VLAN ID 11, and there's actually no IP space uh, pinned to it. But that's going to be because uh, it is not actually terminating on the Fortilink interface, it's terminating somewhere else, in this case, the aggregate interface. So now we can go down to the Forta switch ports. I can go to port 11 here, and we'll change over the native VLAN over to that test workstation VLAN 11. We'll hit apply and I'm going to be right back. I'll go plug in a computer and we'll see that, that gets an IP address. All right, we can see that port 11 is up and running. Uh, the device is probably getting connected. There we go. We have a device and it's getting an IP address right from VLAN 11, which is 10.2.11 slash 24. So we can see that even though that is sitting on uh, behind a Cisco switch, we are able to get VLAN passed across 
Uh, we just have to move that layer three capability from the Forta Switch VLANs like we would for a typical uh, just Forta Link Forta Switch and move the layer three portion up to uh, the VLAN interface under the aggregate interface. All right, everybody, I hope that was helpful for you. If you're interested in more things like Forta Switch uh, and just switching and networking and security in general, please feel free to uh, subscribe to this channel. Uh, and I'll continue sharing more interesting things that I find.